Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. again the immortal tale, The Ghost's Touch. Is it true that when you are very close to death, the dead are really able to reach out to protect you? I don't know, but Ralph Zant and I had been married only a few months when he died. We had been so completely and deeply in love that the memory of the happiness we had found is a thing which will always dominate my life. Well, John Stevens, one of Ralph's best friends, had invited me to spend some time with him on the coast where he had a large house. It was in the town where I had first met Ralph. Mrs. Stewart, my housekeeper and companion, went with me, and Paul Weston, another of Ralph's closest friends, was also there. But he lived in his own house nearby. I had been enjoying my stay there immensely. John had not been with us much, but Mrs. Stewart and I enjoyed the park and the beach. John had been particularly careful about my food, a fact which greatly pleased me. One morning, Mrs. Stewart and I had just returned from the beach. We were standing in the great front hall of the house when she brought up something I know had been on both our minds ever since we'd arrived. My... It's quiet in this big old house. Hasn't it been quiet, Mrs. Stewart? You know, I can remember when this was one of the liveliest houses in St. Anne's. And John was one of the jolliest men alive. Mm, sort of gives me the willies, Mrs. Zant. Something kind of brooding here. No one ever around this part of the house. The servants are all way off in the back there. Has that seemed strange to you? You know, I thought that maybe I was just disappointed comparing it with the way I remembered it when Ralph and I were here together. Oh, no, ma'am. There's something funny here. You mark my words. I didn't want to say nothing, hoping not to worry you. But Mr. John has acted so strange, too. He's a lot more thoughtful than he ever was before. And then, there's that funny smell. Yes. I've smelled that, too. But I thought it was just my imagination. And the strange way Mr. John looks at you after breakfast, when he gets up so solemn-like and goes up into that room at the head of the stairs. He never comes out again till dinner. So what's in that room anyway, Mrs. Zant? Well, I don't know. It's study of some sort, I guess, where John's doing some work. You know, yesterday I got hunting for that smell, and I traced it right to that door. I sniffed all around there and tried to decide what it was. I heard something in there, too. What? Mr. John was in there. I could hear him muttering to himself. No words, mind you, just muttering. And every once in a while, it sounded as though he was stirring something in the glass. Finally, guess what he says? Oh, Mrs. Stewart, I think you've been imagining things. We're letting ourselves get nervous over something that's probably nothing at all. Well, he said, Ah, at last. Now I'm certain this will work. And just then, he came toward the door, so I ran back to my room and shut the door. Well... I don't think he'd mind if we went and paid him a visit. Then we can see what he's doing. I wonder if he's up there now. <gasps> oh, my goodness, that startled me. He's just the front door. Why, it's Mr. Paul. I can see him through the glass in the door. I'll just let him in. It takes these servants here so long to get from way back where they are. Oh, hello, Mrs. Stewart. Is Mrs. Zant here? Hello, Paul. Come on in. Oh, my Dorothy. What are you standing there like that for? You look worried. 
And as though you're just about to do something about it. Well, Paul, as a matter of fact, we were just going up to pay John a visit in his study. There at the head of the stairs. Study? Why, Dorothy, didn't he tell you what that is? No. That's a laboratory, and he's forbidden everyone to come in there, practically on pain of death. Well, he hasn't forbidden me, and I'm going to find out what goes on in there. I think that was a little mean of him. Oh, Mrs. Sand, do you think you'd better? Certainly I do, and I'm going up now. Well, I might as well get hung for a sheep as a lamb. I'll come along, too. Uh, come on, Mrs. Stewart. Well, you aren't frightened, are you, Mrs. Stewart? There's no telling what we may find. Well, <laughs> it can't be too awful. John's no demon, anyway. No answer. Maybe he's gone out. I'm going to look and see. Be careful, Mrs. Zand. Get out. I told you. Oh. oh, Dorothy, come in. I didn't realize it was you. Well, we're all here, John. We came up to pay you a little visit. Fine, fine. Come on in, but uh, shut the door. Hello, Paul. When did you arrive? Mm, just came in. Dorothy said she wanted to come up here. I told her we'd all been forbidden, but she insisted, so my curiosity got the better of me, too. Well, that's fine. I'm really glad you did. This is a good day for me. This is really magnificent. Yes, Dorothy. What do you think of my private domain? Well, it's, it's big enough, I'll say that for it. it. It's a little frightening. Yeah, don't smell so good to me, either. <laughs> Mrs. Stewart doesn't understand experiments the way we do, does she, Dorothy? No, oh, I don't, Mr. John. And after seeing Mrs. Zant fooling with them dangerous chemicals, I don't know as I want to, either. Oh. What's that, Dorothy? You? Why, yes, Paul, I've been doing some experiments. Just for fun, mostly, but it does take up my time since I'm alone so much. That's why I think it was so unfair of John not to tell me he had such a wonderful laboratory here. Well, Dorothy, I've been saving that for later, until this experiment is well underway. I've been hoping we might work together very soon. John, what are those tables over there? They look like... The dissecting tables? Yes, that's what they are. Well, of course, if you're going in for anatomy on the side, I, I'm afraid you'll leave me way behind. Why, no, my dear, quite the contrary. I had hoped you'd follow right along. I'm sure you will with this new experiment. Well, you've, you've got to tell us now what this experiment is. You've certainly got our curiosity aroused. Now, I'll tell you, of course. I have finally developed a new formula. This is the chemical part, which will eventually make a subject absolutely impervious to pain. That is, I will be able to operate without the use of anesthetics. Perform any sort of operation I wish. How does it work? I feed small doses of a certain formula, a very dangerous one, by the way, to the patient in his food. Dangerous because while he's taking them, the patient occasionally falls into semi-conscious states in which he is very close to death. Then, when a certain stage is reached, there is one more dose which the patient must drink straight without any other food. Then the subject becomes unconscious of any pain whatever. But what's the purpose of that? Surely the development of anesthetics... But this, you see, leaves the scientists free to operate on conscious living animals without the stopping of some functions brought on by anesthetics. And this never wears off. Have you ever tried it? Several times, my dear, and with success. I am just waiting now to try my greatest experiment of the lot. To use my formula on the most complicated of living organisms, the human. But, John, you're, you're not going to go on with this, are you? Well, certainly. Why should I stop now? Especially when I'm so near the final experiment. Do you mind, John, if Mrs. Stewart and I go down to the beach... I'm afraid the air in here has made me a little dizzy. That's a good idea, Dorothy. We'll come right along to walk with you. By all means, go ahead. Do get plenty of fresh air, my dear. I hope you'll see more of the laboratory later. Much more. I wondered then what it was in John's look that startled me. Or was it something in his voice? A chill of apprehension made me turn and hurry ahead of Mrs. Stewart out into the cool seashore air. I was sure that John was telling me something, saying something to me alone. And I was afraid even then to let myself believe what I thought it was. Mrs. Stewart and I walked through the little park that lay between the house and the beach. It was a place of many wonderful memories to me, the place where Ralph had first kissed me. We passed the tree where Ralph and I had stood that day, and Mrs. Stewart, bless her, knew what I felt as we came to the spot. She looked at me. These memories aren't going to spoil your visit now, are they, Mrs. Zant? You know, there's a lot of things a person has to live with all her life. Oh, no, Mrs. Stewart. My memories of him wouldn't spoil anything. 
They're too beautiful. Well, I just thought from the way you were looking over at that tree, the one... You know, I'm going over and touch that tree. Just for luck. I feel as though I need some luck right now. I feel... I... Mrs. Sand. Mrs. Oh, Sand. I... Mrs. Sand, what? Well, what's wrong? What are you looking like that for? As though you'd seen a ghost. Oh, Mrs. Stewart, I... I... Where are you? Mrs. Ant, can't you see me here? Well, you're looking at me as though you've gone blind. Mrs. Ant! Mrs. Ant! Mrs. Ant! No, I'm not blind. I can see everything. The tree, the grass, the whole park. But you've gone. I can't hear you anymore. I can't see you. Mrs. Stewart! Mrs. Stewart! You remember, didn't you, Dorothy? You're not afraid. Oh, Ralph. You're here. But I can't see you. It seems as though I can feel your hand on mine. But I can't see you. I'm right here beside you, darling. Always beside you. You've been gone so long, Ralph. I'm always beside you. But I haven't seen you. I haven't been with you before. Dorothy. Dorothy, darling. It can't be for long this time either. They're coming soon. They're on their way now. Who, my dearest? All of them. Don't forget the others. They'll be here. Don't forget the others. Why can't I see you, Ralph? When I want to so much. I can still feel you. Seems as though you have your arm around me. Oh, Ralph. Oh, Ralph. I'm here, though. Right here with you, my darling. Why didn't you let me know before that we were so near to each other? Because you had to come a long way to me first. And now it's time for you to know it, certainly. You already know why. Are you here to protect me? You are. You are, I know it. But from what, Ralph? From what? Dorothy! Dorothy! Mrs. Sand! Oh, thank heavens, Mrs. Sand! You are, aren't you, Ralph? You will protect me. I'll come back to see you here, Ralph. I'll come back. Ralph! Where are you? Why don't you answer? Oh, Ralph, where are you? Dorothy, it's all right. Dorothy, can't you hear me? Can't you see me? Oh, oh. Paul, it's you. Yes, Dorothy. Do you feel all right? Oh, uh, Mrs. Stewart. Oh, Mrs. Sand. I... I ran and found Mr. Paul as fast as I could. You oh. stood there looking straight at me and you wouldn't answer me. You didn't even see me when I put my hand up in front of your face. Oh, oh you gave me an awful fright. Mrs. Stewart came running for us. She said you seemed to have gone into a trance. I came as soon as I could. Uh, she's all right now, isn't she? Yes, now she is. But it certainly is strange. Not strange at all. In fact, rather to be expected. Why, Mr. John, Mrs. Zant hasn't ever had anything like that before. You didn't even see how she was. Mr. Paul here can tell you. Why expected, John? Oh, perhaps the air in the laboratory upset her. Perhaps uh, something she ate. Who knows? The shock of Ralph's passing away hasn't really left her yet, has it, my dear? I... I think we're imagining things. I'm afraid that perhaps the food my cook has been serving has been a bit rich these past few days. I spoke to her about it this morning. You all right now, Mrs. Zant? Oh, quite all right, thank you. I, um, I think we'd better go down to the beach. I'll come along with you, Dorothy. If you'll excuse me, I must get back to the laboratory. My, my dog has been acting rather strangely in the last few minutes. Something very interesting may develop. Will you excuse me? Certainly, John. We'll be back shortly. Uh, don't hurry. Dinner won't be ready for a while, and that's all you need to be back for. I'll see you later. Dorothy, I don't like this at all. Are you afraid of something, Paul? Mr. Paul means this funny spell you just had, and I agree with him. 
It was very strange, but it was very wonderful. Tell me, Dorothy, you know something about chemistry. Would it be possible for John actually to do what he says he has done? Well, there are a great many strange things that can be done with chemistry, Paul. And I believe, yes, that a mind bent on such an insane purpose could probably develop such a combination. But wouldn't it be very dangerous? You're thinking of that spell I just had in connection with it, aren't you? Well, he did say some strange things there in the laboratory. And you may be very right, too, Paul, in suspecting him. I may already have been... Dorothy! Oh, Mrs. Sand, no. Please, let's go home today. But, Dorothy, if you think... No, Paul. Something happened when I was standing under that tree. I talked to Ralph. Dorothy. And I promised to go back to talk to him again tomorrow. You see, I have to stay here now. Because I must talk to him again. It isn't possible. I may be in great danger, Paul. Even this minute, here with you on this sunny beach, I may be very near to death. But I want to see whether what I believe is true. Because perhaps I am so close to death that the spirit of the man who loves me can reach across the narrow space that divides us and protect me. If that is so, I will have discovered more than a thousand insane experiments can prove. You see, I have to stay now. But, Dorothy, hasn't he protected you already? Hasn't he warned you? No, Paul. He's waiting for something. Something else. I think I know what. Didn't he say? No, but there will be more. He told me to come back. He wouldn't have done that if there weren't more. Would he? Shall I have the main dish brought in? Are you both ready? I think you'll find the dinner very good tonight. Since I spoke to the cook this morning, she... Oh, here it is now. Are you sure you feel well enough to eat, Dorothy? Yes, thank you, Paul. I feel very well now. The afternoon must... Oh, Rogers, I believe you've mixed the plates. That one is for Mrs. Zant. Uh, that's all right, John. I don't believe I'll have much dinner anyway. I'm not very hungry. Give Dorothy mine. But I insist. Dorothy's is really quite special. I... I... Listen. Oh, listen. Is... Is something wrong, my dear? Oh, I... No, no, it, it was nothing. But, John, does it really matter that much? Perhaps John has had something special prepared for me, Paul. That's very nice of him, and it will be quite all right. Thank you, Dorothy. We scientists seem to understand each other, don't we? Dorothy, Dorothy. It's all right, Paul. Uh, this dinner and going to bed early tonight, we'll fix Dorothy up splendidly, Paul. Wait and see. Suddenly I had felt Ralph close to me again. It gave me a new confidence, a knowledge that whatever happened now, I was protected. I tasted nothing strange about the food, but I hadn't noticed anything in the meals before either. Ralph was waiting, I was sure now, until John became bold enough to spell his own destruction. The next afternoon, nothing could have kept me in the house. John had been in the laboratory all morning. And when I looked in, I noticed with a shudder that one of the operating tables was covered with clean white sheets. I went quickly out to the tree where I had been with Ralph the day before. It seemed a long time before I again felt that strange, numb feeling as though my life had almost left my body. But... Dorothy, my darling, you are here, under our tree. How could I help coming, Ralph, when you promised that we'd be together again today? I didn't promise, my dear. I couldn't promise that much. But remember, my darling, I am always near you. Ralph! Ralph, where are you? You aren't here anymore. What was that? I'm frightened, Ralph. Look. Look. The grass is all beginning to burn and turn brown. Our tree is withering. Ralph! What was that? That great black mass coming toward me. Dorothy! John... John, where did you come from? I can only see your face staring at me out of that awful darkness. It's all right, isn't it, Dorothy? You're going to be all right. Oh. You said so last night. 
And you know it's true, don't you? What's true? I don't know anything now. Where's Ralph? Oh, John, why are you frightening me this way? Ralph! Ralph! You're going to be all right now. Aren't you, Dorothy? All right now. You're all right now, aren't you, Dorothy? Oh, it's one of those spells again, Mrs. Zant. I'm frightened. Oh, Mrs. Stewart I... and I came out to walk with you, Dorothy. I... We found you here again, just standing here, not seeing anything. I'm going to call Mr. Paul. I don't like this. It frightens me. Mr. Paul will know what to do. Shall we go back to the house, Dorothy? You'll feel better in a minute. No, John. Let's just wait here a minute. Mrs. Stewart will be back with Paul. But everything is ready at the house. I have some work waiting. But, John, I... I... That darkness all around you. I can't see anything but your face again. You will follow me back to the house, won't you, Dorothy? That's it, of course you will. Yes, John. Of course. I'll come with you. Everything here is brown and burnt. Park has grown so with it. It's horrible here now. Come on, Dorothy. We'll go slowly. Come along with me. One step. One step. That's it. Come along with me. Look at those birds over there. They're such big black birds. And they're falling, dropping right into the sea. What's the matter with them, John? Why don't they come up again? Don't be afraid of them, Dorothy. Just come with me. One step. One step. And look, those awful things. Snakes. Snakes, huge ones. And they're not moving. John, they're dead. Nothing here ever stays alive anymore. Oh. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. It's burning hot. It doesn't matter now, Dorothy. Nothing will hurt anymore. One step. One step. Here's the door. The door to the house. Wait. Wait while I open it. But John, it's open. It's open and it's all dark in there. So dark I can't even see your face anymore. John, where are you? Right here, Dorothy. Come up the stairs. One step. One step. But everything is so confused. I can't find the stairs. I can't find anything. It isn't real. Everything is mixed up. I've lost something. I've lost something I can't remember. We're almost there, Dorothy. One step. One step. I can't remember. Ralph! Ralph! Ralph, where are you? I'm afraid. I'm alone here in the darkness. There's no one here. Even John has gone away now and there isn't any light. Ralph! Oh, Ralph. Oh, Ralph, you are near me. I can feel you here now. I'm not alone. It's near now. It's almost time, my darling. Dear. Let me hold your hand. I can feel your hand on mine, Ralph. But I still can't see you. It's so dark in here. Come on, Dorothy. The stairs are there. One step. One step. Oh, Ralph, your hand is helping me along. Hold me tight. In here, Dorothy. Right in here. This is where we'll work, isn't it? It's the laboratory, Ralph. This horrible, evil-smelling laboratory. Ralph, I'm afraid. Why don't you speak to me? Now we're all right, Dorothy. Now we'll work together, won't we? I'm thirsty. I'm so terribly thirsty. That heat. The park is so hot. It's all burned up. I'm thirsty. Here, here, drink this, Dorothy. This will cure your thirst. You'll be all right. Nothing will hurt anymore. I'm not afraid now, Ralph. I'm thirsty. Why can't I have a drink? It'll be all right. That's right, Dorothy. Drink this. Let me hold it up to your lips. I'm so thirsty. I'm going to... Don't let go of me, Ralph! What is it? What is it, Mrs. Hand? Mrs. Hand, look there. 
there. Oh, Lord, what's got him? He's choking to death. Oh. Something's strangling him. John. John. He's dead. Oh. He was just holding that glass to your lips, Dorothy, when we came in, and suddenly it shook out of his hand as though someone had grabbed hold of his wrist. A powerful hand. It was like as if a ghost had reached out and knocked that glass out of his hand. Someone did, Paul. Ralph. But no one was here. It couldn't have been. Oh, Mrs. Sam. I was protected. I knew I would be. Ralph was able to reach across and save me, Paul. I know it. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you The Ghost's Touch. Bellkeeper, toll the bell.